Right now, an exclusive interview with Connecticut's next governor, Ned Lamont. We first met him on Face the State 13 years ago in 2006, a year he made history by beating Senator Joe Lieberman in the Democratic primary. I love the fact that 30,000 new Democrats registered. I think we gave people something to believe in. And I love the fact that there were 43% of the Democrats voted. That was an enormous turnout, much more than anybody would have expected. And I think that shows that the people of Connecticut are ready for real change. After a stinging loss, two years later, I asked Lamont about his political future. Would you consider running for governor in 2010? No, I don't think so, but I think whoever is running for governor has got to know something about jobs. He changed his mind and ran, but the magic of 2006 wasn't repeated. 2018, though, was Lamont's year. He rolled through the primary, and in November, voters gave him the keys to the state government. We'll ask the governor-elect about his plan to transform the land of steady habits. And we're also joined by the state's next lieutenant governor, Susan Bysiewicz. It's all straight ahead this first Sunday of the new year, January 6th, 2019. From Eyewitness News, Connecticut's most watched local political program, this is Face the State. Good morning and welcome to Face the State. It's 8.30. I'm Dennis House. It's a new year, a new start for Connecticut with a brand new governor. And he's with us today, Governor-elect Ned Lamont and Lieutenant Governor-elect Susan Bysowitz. They're both was with us this Sunday morning for an exclusive interview. And congratulations to both of you on winning and your big swearing-in coming up on Wednesday. What are you feeling? Because, uh, you know, victories eluded both of you in recent years. So how are you feeling? A, it's great to be back. B, it looks like the same guy I saw from 13 years ago. Here we are. Absolutely. Um, here's what I'm feeling. Uh, I, Susan and I have just been overwhelmed by uh, the citizenship. Everybody wanting to step up and to do their part to turn around the state of Connecticut. Land of steady habits, as you point out. We're going to be in here for some big changes. People are We've just been meeting the last two days with all of our policy groups. We had hundreds of people, Republicans, Democrats, a lot of private sector, not-for-profits, all weighing in on the big issues confronting the state of Connecticut, and they want to stay involved. That's what we need. And, and I think it's a, it's a fresh start for our state, and we have a totally different approach. We have a very collaborative, open, and transparent uh, approach, and I think people in Connecticut are very receptive, and they're excited and optimistic about this new change. You were rivals once. How does it work? How will it work when you're both at the Capitol? Pretty darn good, I think. Yeah, you... Seems to have obviously got, you know. Susan's a great partner, closer. I got to tell you. I mean, she knows Hartford. She knows her way around the state capitol. I'm, you know, private sector guy coming in from the outside. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty good team. No, and, and I think starting in May when we got together right before the state convention, one of the reasons that we formed a team is we were always on the same page when it came to how we're going to create good jobs for the state, how we're going to get our state back on track and financially. And it's been a great collaboration, both through uh, the general election and now in this, in this really incredible transition process that we've had. On an emotional level, Governor Light, how does it feel to finally have that victory in your hands and to be starting the change that you wanted to bring 13 years ago? Uh, what feels is um, the faith that people have put in us to make a difference for the state. And I feel an intense sense of uh, responsibility. Uh, not to disappoint, to, to uh, get up there um, on an, uh, the state of the state and, and the inaugural ball and give people something to believe in the state. We have so many great things going for the state of Connecticut. I've got to make people believe again. Give us a preview of what you're going to be talking about on Wednesday. It's a balance. It's a balance in terms of uh, what's great about this state, um, our attributes, the fact that our core businesses are doing well and hiring, trying to get people lifted up, get folks from the cities an opportunity for a job. This doesn't happen all the time. Uh, so it's that great sense of optimism, I feel, about the state. And I've got to make sure that others feel it as well, coupled with the fact that um, we're going to have to deal head on with a fiscal crisis. And we're going to deal with it head on, but I don't want that to define us, the state of Connecticut, in the next four years. I've got to make sure we get that solved, put that behind us, and make people know this state is where they want to be. Let's look into the crystal ball and jump ahead to 2022, which is the next gubernatorial election. So let's go to 2021. What will our state look like in a couple of years after Governor Lamont has made some changes? I think you're going to say... Um, we haven't solved all the fiscal issues, but we know 
we're on the path to resolution. People know that their pensions are now going to be secure. People know what the budget's going to look like a few years out. We won't affix transportation, but they're going to know we have a, a five and ten year plan. We've got a funding source for it, so they know what um, I-95 corridor and Metro North and the Spurs to New London and Waterbury are going to look like. There's going to be a real sense of where this state is going to be in 10 years and, and we're going to get it started. And I would uh, say further that we'll have made some very progressive changes. We'll have passed paid family medical leave. We'll have a $15 an hour minimum wage. We will have focused on small business support and we'll have, and we'll have brought many more companies like Infosys uh, to our state. Um, you did that before you were even governor. I can't wait to see how many big companies we can bring to our state and how many small businesses we can grow. Being a CEO yourself, you know a lot of them. Have you been reaching out to others about perhaps expanding in our state or even moving here? Absolutely. Are you kidding? That's what my job is. I'm a cheerleader for this state. Uh, you're going to see uh, some folks uh, coming to the inaugural ball. Uh, first thing Susan and I have done is we've met with every uh, CEO. I've certainly tried to meet with everyone that I could. Uh, get an idea of uh, what's important to them, how the state can be an ally for them. Uh, get an idea of who's in their supply chain that maybe isn't in Connecticut, who would maybe have a natural advantage to recruit and get to the state of Connecticut. Um, yeah, wow. we're going to make sure that, and, and our major outreach is going to be CEO to CEO, just like what we did with uh, the Infosys deal. So if you're an advanced manufacturer in life sciences, you know somebody from out of state, you're going to take the lead in welcoming them to Connecticut. And we're going to have a pipeline from uh, school to work and partnerships with our uh, employers so that they have the talent and the trained people that they need to uh, grow their businesses because that's the one thing we found whether we're visiting a farm, a small business, or a Fortune 500 company, what we keep hearing is we don't have enough of the trained people that we need, so that's going to be a huge focus for us too. When you yeah. talk to these CEOs, are they unhappy in the state? No, I think uh, they love the state, they want to stay here, they want to grow here, they want to expand here, and they want us to get our act together. Uh, that's what I hear. Act together, meaning uh, we can't have this fiscal sort of Damocles hanging mm -hmm. over our head. Start telling us what the path uh, to getting us to stability is going to be, fiscal stability. They say, I want to stay here. Make sure, as Susan says, mm -hmm. I've got the talent that can make sure that Electric Boat and Bratton Whitney can continue to grow and expand. And that's something a governor could really make a difference in, training those folks. In your assessment right now, is the state fiscally stable at this moment? No, I don't think it is. I think... Uh, you know, we've been looking at the numbers. Uh, Dan's mm -hmm. been very generous in terms of opening up the books. We've been working with the OPM, and um, our fixed costs grow at $400 million a year. That's not fiscally stable. How do you fix it? Uh, you fix it the same way I suggested during uh, the campaign. Uh, you start from a position of fairness, making sure that everybody um, knows that I'm not singling any group out, uh, but we're going to solve this together. We have the business community. They're going to be um, generous in, in terms of some of the uh, contributions they make to the state of Connecticut. We're going to sit down collaboratively with our friends in labor and say, over time, we're going to have to make sure we have a pension that's there, not just for you, but for the next generation of workers as well. We're going to digitize uh, our government. That's, we're not going to do that overnight, but we're going to find uh, over time that we can make this uh, a government mm -hmm. that's more efficient and more constituent friendly online. As you've gone through the state, have you found something that's shockingly archaic? Well, there's a lot. We, we found, uh, as we've been talking to our, our transition policy teams, um, there's no data sharing between departments. Our computers can't talk to one another. And we found that we are missing out on millions and millions of dollars in federal funding because we're not working across agencies and we're not working um, as collaboratively and as closely as we can with our federal delegation. So that's going to change when we take over on the 10th. We're going to take a quick time out more with the new team. They'll be leading our state as of Wednesday at 1230, correct? That's the exact time. We welcome your comments on social media. You can also watch past editions of Face the State on our YouTube channel. In fact, our old interviews with Ned Lamont and Susan Beisowitz are there. And you can also watch it on the Channel 3 app.